Right, the Mustang Bullet. Let's talk about it. Let's drive. I know how to drive, I swear. Oh, I almost stalled out. <laughs> So this is a 2019 Mustang Bullet. Let's go over the specs a little bit. So it's 480 horsepower, which was 20 horsepower more than the Mustang GT. And made about 420 foot pounds of torque, which I think was like 20 more foot pounds of torque or about the same. Zero to 60 in the mid four second range, quarter mile in the mid 12 second range. It was a quick car. The problem with the Mustang Bullet when it came out in 2019 was the price. These started, I believe, right under $50,000, but the dealer markups took them well over 70. And in some cases, they might have even started touching $80,000. That's a lot of money for a Mustang that isn't a Shelby. For that kind of money, I would have bought a Shelby GT350. And I would choose that car over this car any day. Unless you're talking about right now. So a lot of these you can actually find for less than $40,000 now, which actually makes it quite a performance bargain there aren't too many cars that you can buy with 480 horsepower with heated and cold seats which with memory seats with navigation with android auto apple carplay too many cars you can find for less than $40,000 which means that if you held off from buying this new and you buy it with 20 or 30,000 miles on it you can find one of these for almost $40,000 less than when it was brand new that's a lot of money Coyote motors are. <laughs> this car is so good. Oh, I love the rev match. <laughs> Those sound shifts are so cool. I don't even have to blip the throttle myself. Man, I miss driving kids. I need to get on the highway or something and let this thing stretch its legs, especially with the gearing and the new 2018s plus. I don't know if you guys saw it, but Engineering Explain actually did a video about how Ford made the MT82 worse from its gearing and it makes perfect sense. It just takes so long to wind it up, especially with it having like a 7,500 RPM red line. I mean, it just, it takes so long. I mean, if this had like a 6,000 RPM red line, then it wouldn't be as bad. Then you might hit 40, 45 miles an hour in first gear. And that's more, that's more manageable. The gap between like first and second and second and third is just too large. I mean, by the time you hit the top of second gear, you're breaking the law by a lot. You know, Ford's pretty famous for taking advantage of nameplates, right? You got you got the Mustang Mach-E, which I <laughs> won't even get into. Then you have the new Dark Horse. I mean, that that's a new nameplate that they're probably going to have 25 variants before I die of. Um, you know, and the Bullet is no exception. I mean, they they have the original, obviously, and then you have the 2001, which had 265 horsepower, which is five more than the uh, regular Mustang GT. 0 to 60 in the high 5 second range. I mean, for its time, it wasn't wasn't bad. Kind of quick. Um, but that car, to me, it, it, it screamed that Ford was just trying to increase sales. I mean, it just didn't make a whole lot of sense. It made a lot more sense when they came out with the Bullet in 2008. It's from 2005 to 2009, that's when Ford had the retro styling. The one that was modeled after those great Mustangs of the 60s. And that car, even in just base GT form, looked fantastic. It paid a great tribute to the Bullet from that movie. And then they came out with this car, and I didn't really understand why. <laughs> I felt like it was just another way for them to grab sales. They were trying to fill the gap between, I guess, uh, was it the Boss and you know, 
know, the Boss and then the Shelbys and then you got the Bullet and now you have the Mach 1 and then of course you're going to have the new Dark Horse later on. And even though these don't look like the original Mustangs, right? You still get that heritage, right? You have the blacked out grill with no badge. You have those bullet style wheels and the color of this car. So you still get that bullet heritage, right? You still get that feeling that this is something special. And I gotta be honest, I kinda want one. And this car was kind of a disappointment in general. I mean, even sales were down to the point where dealers started to knock off that market adjustment. And then they started knocking down the price slightly just to get it off their lots. And yes, I know around that time everybody was moving to SUVs and trucks, but the dealers knew that they had to do something because people just weren't grabbing onto it. And I think it's because most of the new generation, they don't really see this as a special car. Oh yeah, let's find some twisted rows. rows. roads. generation they don't really see this as a special car and I don't really blame them I mean it was just a car that was in a movie you know it's not like a Mach 1 or the boss you know where they have that heritage of racing the bullet was just hey here's a car that kind of looks like a car that was in a movie but I, I gotta tell you <laughs> the paint is fantastic that green with like the gold flakes in it one of the best colors Ford has ever come out with oh a horse speaking of Mustang I forgot what I was saying. I saw a horse, I'm in a horse. Almost stalled out. Coffee. So yeah, I get it. They don't really know about the car. They don't know about the movie. They probably don't even wanna watch the movie, which actually, if you haven't seen the movie, I actually, <laughs> it starts off slow, but it's a pretty good movie, especially for one that was made in the 60s. God, this gearing. Oh. These things handle so good. Ever since Ford came out with the S550 chassis, it's kind of spoiled a lot of Mustang fans, a lot of Mustang guys, a lot of Mustang owners. And gals, I'm sorry. You know, I, I know there's a lot of people that knocked the Mustang, and rightfully so. I mean, there's a ton of freaking videos out there that support their claims. But if you're not an idiot, and if you know when to get out of it, when you're clearly starting to slip, you'll never crash. Oh, I just ran a stop sign, just like in the movie. I will tell you one thing though, I haven't seen a green beetle yet. Speaking of that, there's actually a commercial for this 2019 bullet where it actually featured, uh, I believe it was Steve McQueen's granddaughter. Um, can't remember her name. I'll figure that out and put it on the screen. And she's basically racing to try to fight a parking spot. I'm not gonna ruin the whole thing, but the green beetle did make an appearance in that too, which was freaking hilarious. And you also had the 2008 bullet make an appearance in a Mustang commercial which their slogan back then was, as American as Mustang. Okay. <laughs> and then you had a 2005 Mustang commercial, which if you haven't seen, it is quite possibly one of the greatest commercials, definitely one of the greatest Mustang commercials, up there with the GT500 Germany commercial. And it was basically a guy standing out in a field, and he heard a voice. And that voice said, if you build it, he will come. So the guy built a racetrack and then he went into his barn and pulled out his 2005 Mustang GT. And then somebody came out of the corn and it was Steve McQueen. And you might be thinking, how is that possible when he died in 1980? while he was receiving special treatments for the cancer that he was trying to, try, that, or, you know, that he was battling. 
And even back then in 2005, they, they did a pretty damn good job using computers and I'm guessing CGI. I don't know if CGI was back was around back then, but they did a pretty good job. And Steve McQueen walks up to the the owner of the Mustang and the guy throws him the keys and he gets in and just starts ripping it around the track. It was a nice tribute to Steve McQueen from the movie Bullet. And I'm also convinced that if anybody else played that role, the movie wouldn't have been as good. He was that good of an actor. So if you're younger and you have no clue what Bullet is, I suggest you watch that movie. And then you'll understand truly how special this car is. It's not $80,000 special, but used for thirty-five. dollars Absolutely. So let's get into the movie a little bit. If you guys don't know anything about the movie Bullet, essentially it featured a Mustang in this Highland green color chasing after a Dodge Charger for about 10 minutes. And I remember when I first watched it, I remember thinking in my head like, eh, whatever. It didn't really mean anything to me because I didn't understand the backstory. I never saw the movie. And then I watched the movie. And I remember that scene where Steve McQueen was walking to the Bullet Mustang, which was really just a, what, 390 Fastback or whatever. I remember when he was walking up to it and under a bypass you can see the Charger pull up. And then you can see Steve McQueen look and he's watching. And then he gets in his car. And you just know that he's up to something. And you know that he knows that those uh, guys in the Charger, they weren't going to take him alive. They were, uh, they were out to kill him. So, he drives around for a little bit. The Charger's still following him. And then the Charger loses him. And you're wondering where he's going to appear. And then you see from inside of the Charger's interior, you see Steve McQueen appear in his Mustang in the rearview mirror. So now you have Steve McQueen behind the murderers in the Charger. And you could just feel the tension with the music that was playing. You could feel everything. You could feel the tension rising. You knew that something was about to happen. The chase scene after that was it was pretty good. But, I mean, it was two cars chasing each other. I mean, what else can you do? But it was it was the lead up to it. And immediately when he peeled out and then Steve McQueen downshifted, you were like, get him! Now, they say they tuned this car to sound like the original. I don't buy it. Now, they did tune it differently. I mean, it does make more horsepower than the 2018 Mustang GT. Those made 460. This makes 480. The only thing that really changed, though, was the intake manifold, and they revised the tuning a little bit in order to get that extra 20 horsepower. The sound, these Coyotes, they don't sound like a Mustang, right? You think old 302, you think, you think modular 4.6, especially the dual overhead cam four valves that were in like the Cobras and the GT500s, the 5.4s and the GT500s, or even the 5.8 and the 13 14 GT500s. Those engines, those sounded like a Mustang. You know, Mustang is a very distinct sound compared to pretty much any other car. Now, with that said, this does not sound bad by any stretch. Oh. It just sounds so good. I went through a few exhausts on my 2017 Mustang because I just couldn't find the right sound. And at first I went with the cheap exhaust, MBRP, and then guys at work kind of reminded me how much it sounds like shit, and it did. So I went out and found a used Magnaflow competition exhaust to put on my 2017. And that was the best sounding S550 Mustang, or the best sounding Coyote Mustang. I've ever heard. The problem with that exhaust was the drone was pretty bad. And I had a 45 minute drive to work. It was kind of unbearable. So I got rid of it and bought a Borla cat bag. And those actually sound really good too. Maybe you guys can explain this to me. Why do people like the Corsa exhaust so much? I hate the way it sounds. It's so raspy. I know how to drive, I swear. Oh, I almost stalled out. <laughs> Oh, shit. 
If you guys are wondering how how well it goes over speed bumps, pretty well. <laughs> Gears are too tall. Even with the tall gearing, this car is still a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I haven't even really ripped it. I mean, I've gotten RPMs up a little bit, but what's the point? You can have a lot of fun, even at 5,000 RPM. Ugh. Where am I going? So here's a question for you guys, since I'm completely lost now. If you had the opportunity to own this or a 2007-2010 GT500, which one would you choose? I know which one i choose. And unfortunately, it wouldn't be this. But actually, it depends. It really does depend. If I was going to use one as a daily driver, I would definitely choose this one. It's more comfortable. You have heated and cooled seats. You have the navigation. The digital gauge cluster is pretty awesome. I mean, it's a lot more comfortable. However, I like to tinker with things, and I would love to tinker with the GT500. So it really depends on what you want to do. If you want to build a car up, not even necessarily to race, but just to just to do something, just to build something yourself. I think a GT500 is the way to go. If you're looking to get in a performance car using it as a daily driver, it's really hard to beat the Bullet. Very hard to beat. It's such a good car. Oh, we got plenty of runway. I need to find a back road here. Delaware. So far it's been disappointing, to say the least. They do have lava though, so. Yes! Time to call it. There just aren't enough roads to have fun on. Damn it, Delaware. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more TSG drives. See you on the next one.